Welcome to another episode of our podcast Life Without Purse, Życie bez gruchy. And today, folks, I have someone very glittery, but with a lot of meaning and with a lot of value underneath. She is not only a marketing expert, a project manager, creative director, but also someone who is leading teams, coaching people and coaching professionals, getting them to the high performance level. And recently we met uh, in Austin, Texas during Consensus 2022. And I thought what a great opportunity to have someone like uh, Alondra with us. So without further ado, Alondra Gartha, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Marcin. It's so great to be here with you. I am so excited to be having this conversation with you right now because I think it's very important, uh, just the topics that we're going to discuss today. And so, um, yeah, let me share a little bit about myself. So, yes, like Marcin said, I am a certified high-performance coach and creative director. Um you know, what inspires me to do what I do is, you know, people like Marson, you know, creators, artists, you know, who are willing to put themselves out there and just reach the people that they know that they can help. And so I'm just excited to just enter the dialogue with you. Awesome. Hey, thank you for your time. And I wanted to kind of go back to what you said. What's the mean certified coach? Certified what's a certified who? coach? Yeah, what's a certified coach? Yes. So the difference between uh, just a normal coach and a certified coach, well, um, it's pretty clear, right? It's someone who has been trained, um, who has been given the skills to take someone through a process uh, and help them achieve the results that they want in their life. Uh, compared to someone who just titles himself as a coach. Uh, well, there's different um, roles to be a coach. You can be a marketing coach. You can be an executive coach. You can be a soccer coach. Uh, but a high performance coach is someone who really digs deep um, on the things that you rarely you know, reflect on, right? And it's those things like purpose, our vision. And so uh, a high performance coach helps you get the clarity that you need um, to just take that next step in your journey. That's awesome. You see, you're great at, uh, you know, framing things. I need to get better at that because I'm rough, you know, like a rough diamond. So, uh, so I need to get better at, uh, positioning and, and wording because uh, the words matter actually you know that's how people can perceive you and I definitely need to learn from you so what we're gonna do today we're gonna talk about your origin story and you have an amazing story to tell as a uh, woman who transitioned into as you said marketing into the crypto world so that will be the leading sort of uh, matter here during our 30 minutes or so and uh, we'll also talk about uh, the crypto adoption and like, uh, you know, how you got into it, what hooked you and why other women should get involved. What's there for them? What are the benefits? So let's start maybe with your with your story, because you said uh, you're from uh, originally you were born here in the US. Yes, that's correct. I am from McAllen, Texas. Right, right. And uh, but your, pa your, your parents are... Uh, they, they weren't born here, right? In the U.S.? Yes, that's correct. My parents were both born in Mexico and they migrated to the United States. Um, yeah, when they were just teenagers. So, yes, I've been oh. living here in the U.S. And I travel back and forth. I live in a border town. So I have that access to that community as well. And, and I know that also has developed in a way who I am as well. Yeah, so, you know, that's very important to understand who you are, where you grew up. I was growing up in an orphanage and, uh, you know, I think that that's an important story to tell to people because they kind of get your, like, motive, you know, and they get, they kind of, and I was growing up in Poland. So, you know, when I tell them that piece of information, they already 
I can kind of connect the dots later on. So let's uh, focus on you and let's talk about like growing up in Texas. And by the way, I love Texas. I went to Austin. I, uh, I, I love Texas. Uh, is it similar in McAllen? Uh, like, uh, is it similar to Austin? People are like so awesome, friendly, and like and, and beautiful as well. I, I mean, just look at you. You know, people. In, in, I, I found people in Texas to be the most beautiful people I've seen in the like, probably in the whole United States. Oh wow, that's that's such a compliment. Thank you. Um, well, I would say people are the same in their Texas spirit, but. We mindset, um, I feel that, you know, for my town, since we're not as a developed uh, city yet, we do struggle, especially with being open with the digital world and just the possibilities with that metaverse. Um, there is still, you know, some resistance there. So I guess the people in Austin are just more, you know, progressive and just, yeah, they're just really, really open, you know, to, to grow. So, so, so McAllen is more kind of conservative. Would that be appropriate to say that? Yes. That's okay. actually the perfect way to say that. Yeah. Cause I'm digging there because that means that there's some sort of seed of that in you. And then when you went to Austin, you know, you also noticed the differences and uh, let's talk about that. Actually, let's talk about like your transition into like, you know, how did you get started and uh, what did you study and uh, how you kind of ended up being a coach, a uh, creative director, you know, take us there maybe and uh, give us that, uh, you know, maybe that snapshot. Yes. Uh, thank you. I will try to make this short and sweet, but um, yes. So, well, I have just been for as long as I can remember, I've always just a person who loves to be engaged, uh, just someone who really likes to be present with people and really just connect. Um, and so in my early life, you know, I, I was just always very available to different different things that I didn't see my sisters going into. And I'm like, hmm, I should try this. Maybe I might explore, you know, different experiences that maybe I haven't been presented before. And I've always just had that character of just taking risks and just having faith in myself that, you know, there's, there's, it's going to be okay. If there's a reason why you're able to see things, if you can just put the step, take that action, right. You know, you will, you will see if, if it works, if it's a failure or if it's a success. That's right. And so what did you study? Like, what was your uh, major? I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't go to the university street, like strictly. I went to a technical college. So I don't know, like it's not a university. It's like a technical uh, school, basically kind of pre-college, I think so. But it still gave me the title. I mean, I, I hate titles, you know, because I just play around with them. And I'm, that's why I love Elon Musk, because he can kind of go out of the box like all the other people. And he's like, you know, he's the techno king of the world, you know? And that's what I love. Like, I love that uh, people can actually get results. They can get shit done. And also they can get outside the box and, you know, and just uh, love at things. So could you take us uh, through like your time, you know, how you grew up and, and how you actually, what, what did you study? Yes. So I actually studied philosophy at St. Mary's University in San Antonio, Texas. Philosophy. Um, philosophy. Yes. I was, I actually started with the marketing major, uh, but I was just sitting there in business classes, just thinking to myself like, well, you know, I can easily, you know, create a business plan and yes, you know, it's, it's very good to educate yourself in the process and, you know, things that they don't talk to us when trying to open a business, you know, out there in the world, like the finances and things right. like opening That's your right. business account and registering your business, you know, these things, they don't even tell you in business school. So, you know, I'm like, I want crazy, to have right? more in depth. Yeah. It's crazy. It's insane. Um, and they just expect us to kind of, you know, figure it out. Right. But so philosophy really just, gave me the opportunity to um, 
create a space for myself and for my thoughts where I, you know, was not bound by limitations because philosophy really, um, you know, it's the love of wisdom, right? We're always contemplating or questioning the, the value of things, right? The utility that we tie to material things. And so philosophy really just made me focus on the, the thoughts that I was kind of tying to just, yeah, like my feelings, you know, and just understanding what I wanted. Um, and so after graduating philosophy, I also went into marketing. Um, I also got certified by um, this platform called ClickFunnels. I don't know if you've been familiar yeah, with ClickFunnels. Yeah. So yes. I've been I've been building funnels. And honestly, it was the best marketing education that I received. Um, just as far as, you know, I feel that sometimes when we, we think about marketing, we just think like, oh, we just... We're going to have a product. If it looks good, if it tastes good, you know, if someone's going to buy it, we'll put a good price tag on it and it's going to sell. But really, when you want to build a business or you're building your brand, you really have to think about yourself as the leader or as the creator and the story that you're putting out there, right? Because what you're putting out there is an extension of your voice. So, um, for me, philosophy really helped develop that voice for myself and just, yeah, just value the good things in life and focus more on developing just, yeah, my skills and serving those people that I'm called to serve and helping them also realize their potential. Because I believe that we are all unique. We're all different. We are all, you know, we all have a different gift. And, you know, it's our responsibility to unfold that gift. No one's going to come to you and give you that business idea. No one's going to tell you, hey, go open, you know, a wallet, go open, you know, something. You have to make that choice for yourself and see that, that benefit in the long term. So these questions are very important to ask. That's right. And also we discussed that in Austin, actually, how people... A lot, of, a lot of people don't take initiative and because they're afraid of risks, you know, they're afraid that they're going to be rejected and they're, they're afraid to fail and maybe they're lazy, you know, I don't know. But <laughs> I want to also touch on your um, experience as a coach. So, you know, philosophy, I, I guess kind of you were finding yourself, maybe that's why it was interesting to you. Like uh, I had also like a period in my life where, you know, spent some time, I was living actually in Barcelona. So that's why people um, uh, here in the US, uh, because mostly we have Latinos, right? And then they always say not Bar Bar Barcelona, they say Barcelona. It's si, 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 si. So they, they say, oh, you're Castellano, you know, you're, Sp you're Spaniard. I said, no, I'm Polaco, you know, so <laughs> Polaco from Polonia. Uh, and, nice. Um, I wanted to uh, go into like uh, your experience as a uh, creative director and, and a coach and someone who works with uh, with themes. You know, if you could, uh, you know, tell us about that, why it's important. I, I, I think I would like to have a leader like you, you know, I think it would be very easy. Would it be easy? Are you easy or are you tough? I, I, I think, you know, a leader has to kind of hold both roles, uh, you know, push you and kind of, you know, at the same time, be your cheerleader. Um, because what, what's it all worth? You know, if you just have someone celebrating you the whole time, but sometimes you need that person who can keep you accountable and just remind you of, Hey, there's, there's that one step, you know, that reminding of that person that you're always evolving towards. So, um, to your question of, you know, my role as a creative director, um, I just find it so rewarding to help, you know, small businesses define and identify, you know, the purpose in whatever that they're pursuing, right? If it's, you know, shapewear, if it's, you know, cookies that they're selling, if it's art that they're selling, you know, 
whatever that may be, it's just so rewarding to go through that process with, you know, someone who just wants to go out there in the world, put their message, help someone with their solution. Um, and just the creative process, like I said, you know, just a lot comes up for, for both of us, you know, and just like so many ideas in the collaboration. I think that's where growth takes place, right? In that sphere of creativity and imagination. Because like I mentioned before, the way to grow is when you're not bound by limitations. And those limitations are self-imposed sometimes. I, I'm not going to say that, you know, sometimes our environment uh, can limit us, but ultimately it's ourselves. Um and so I love tying just my roles as a creative director and as a coach. I, you know, I kind of, you know, I'm, it's all in one identity, right? I kind of just am. Um, and just helping guide my, my clients towards, you know, that next step in their, in their business, just optimizing their, the way that they acquire their customers, their marketing strategies, and just, you know, kind of adapting as well to the times that we're living in. Because, um, you know, I know we're just stepping into Web3, uh, but we are still going to utilize a lot of Web2, uh, you know, technology, especially for marketing. Um, because as you know, Web3 is, you know, a, a platform for sovereign identity, right? It's to protect that, that, you know, IP of that, of that project, of that network. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, Marcin. No, you're, you're totally right. So that's, you know, that's the goal and technology blockchain with, you know, being so transparent, we discussed education being a huge problem. And, and I think blockchain, you know, could definitely help um, solve it because people, and kids are learning on the data that's outdated, on the data that's, you know, like that space, it's so, it's just so changing, evolving rapidly that I cannot keep up. How about someone, you know, like a school issuing, uh, you know, books and the, the curriculum, it's outdated. Like, uh, and then the kids, uh, you know, teenagers, I was in Austin, I met, uh, I think I told you that story. We went... Uh, What's it called? Six Sixth Street? Sixth Street. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we went to Sixth Street and then so Party Street. Uh, and so you know, we're, we're having a, a you know, a drink after the uh, after the conference uh, and uh, we're chatting, you know, like there was a group from from Consensus and one of the students, uh, she was from like, you know, she just she was like around and but we had the chat and she said that she paid 100k I mean, probably not even her, but, uh, you know, the parents or like, I don't know how it functions exactly here, but she said she's already 100K in debt. She just started college and she doesn't know anything. And I said, hey, why did you go to this conference here in Austin? You live here. Oh, I don't know what that is. Like, uh, I have no clue. And she, guess what? She's studying finances. She doesn't have a clue what's going on in her own city. And I'm not saying that that's kind of like... Uh, everywhere there's a lot of people that they're involved but and also i'm not diminishing you know like uh, and demeaning anyone here i'm just saying that uh, uh you know i think people will start opening their eyes uh, because you know they're in debt uh, and uh, they have no experience at all in the real world and i think with blockchain uh, when we get the blockchain into like the educational system educational system and the financial system can system can be more transparent and uh, and I think, you know, people have the real time data to work on as well. Not like the data from the from the past, real time, because it's real life. Uh, so I think there's a lot of applications, but um, we'll go into the transition, you know, to crypto, because I, I like the segue it was very, uh, very, very smooth. I wanted also to focus on like uh, when you work with, uh, you said I have uh, clients. Do you have like female clients mostly or men clients? Uh, uh, male. I actually don't have female clients. You I would love you. to. Right. Male. Yeah, so. Right. Right. Okay. So, um, so what sort of issues, uh, are, are you working with, uh, them to solve? Like, uh, what's, uh, 
I think mo most of the you know female would love to hear from from you like uh, hey what's going on with those guys what's wrong with them yes so one of them uh has an nft game um and so basically he's you know one of the leaders he's the ceo of the company um and this project of course for those of you who don't know um what happens in the involvement of a project so you know, you have developers, you have, you know, people who are within the network who invest in the project. Um, so they have a say. So um, what I'm trying to say here is kind of hmm, developing that voice for that leader. Uh, just, I guess it's really, I, I kind of want to retract back if, if I could, Marcin. Yeah, sure. Um, when you mentioned the word blockchain, it really just made me think of the word dream, really. Like it really did. Because you see, you're good I at marketing. I have to dream big, you know, dream big. I have to do that. Yes. You know? Yes, 100%. I mean, that's that's truly how I feel about blockchain. Like I really wow. do feel that you, and you are see, that's now. Why I, you're you're going to be amazing and like, you know, getting people into crypto. Like, hey, that's a dream. That's a, you know, like, uh, what's, what do you call it? And, and that's an American dream, you know? I would even add American dream, but... Uh, yes, yes, 100%. Yes, I agree, because especially for... And that's so inspiring. I mean, I love seeing, you know, people who, just like you, Marcin, who you're from Poland, and now you're a citizen here in the United States, and you're building your dreams, and you have your company, and you're serving people, and... You know, that is so inspirational. You're really living the American dream. Um, but for many people here in the United States who are citizens and who have lived in, in this bubble, right, they're not able to see the opportunities and really, yes, the, the freedom that we have in this country. Um, and I feel that we really do oversee that. Uh, I myself, you know, I lived... Um, you know, in a foreign country for a couple of months. Where did you and live? I, what, what country did I was, you live in? Yes, I was in Thailand. Yeah, just being over there made me value, in a way, my government. You know, I, I know that we can have that conversation. Oh, or especially the media. I feel like they polarize so much the story of of the purpose of our government. Um, but back to back to you know blockchain and the dream um and you know me as a as a creative director and as a coach i really do struggle with leaders you know dreaming and just believing in themselves like especially when they have success they've reached success at a certain point and they've you've hit they've hit a plateau you know it's really hard for them to really engage again with that vision and find that spark and find that energy and vitality in that vision because you know it, it may be that you had a bad experience or you just are not having you lost the, money, you know, recently. Yes, with the stock. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you can I lost really, some money as well, know. but you know, but I, uh, <laughs> I, I wake up, I wake up, I wake up, you know, and I just, uh, face, uh, another day. So yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'm That's interrupting right. you, but, uh, but you definitely, I can relate no, to yes. that. Yes, 100%. Um, I mean, me too. We're all kind of figuring out this whole space together. Um, but what is it if we don't risk? It's it's actually we end up losing We don't drink more. champagne if we don't <laughs> risk, you know? <laughs> exactly. You, you, you don't risk, you don't drink champagne. Uh, yeah, I, to I totally agree with you that uh, a lot of people also, um, you know, I think we all need... Uh, you know, we go, that's why, you know, this podcast is called, that's a, because that's a Polish name. It's no gruha. And I believe that when we wake up, when I wake up, I'm a gruha by default. And gruha is a Polish slang. It's a pur. That means that you're lazy and that's based on study. So Gallup did a poll and they proved, based on a sample of people, the poll uh, said that 86% of all the Americans are unhappy at work. 
unhappy at work, 86%. Out of those 86% of uh, all the unhappy you know, people, I think 13% um, are actively disengaged. That means that they're stealing from the employer, from themselves, and they're wasting time, wasting energy, not being productive because they're not emotionally connected with what they're doing. Going back to your point, no purpose. They don't know what's their roadmap, no vision at all. They don't know, they have no, you know, referential point of what do you actually have in terms of freedom, in terms of opportunities, in terms of all the resources around you. So that's why, you know, no gruha. And, I, you know, next time I see you, I'm going to give you the, the sticker. But, uh, you know, I, I wanted to go back to, uh, we need to go uh, definitely transition to, uh, to the crypto. But I wanted to go back also to one thing that I noticed when I met you. You had a cross here. And I've seen on, like, on your Instagram, like, so you're a person of faith. Just like, you know, I was growing up in an orphanage with uh, Catholic nuns. So, you know, may, maybe let's talk about your faith for a little bit. Yeah. So um, thank you, first of all, for giving me the space to talk about this, um, since it is a very personal, you know, conversation for me. Uh, and my faith really, you know, it's it's my purpose. It really is the reason for, you know, everything that I do and just the way that I move and how I think, um, because I just have learned through experiences where I have felt where, you know, there's no return, there's no way out, that the best thing that I can do is just have belief in that future self, in that vision, you know? And sometimes when I speak about this, people get confused, like, oh, like, what do you mean by vision? Like, how do you, how do you That's tap right. into that? It's kind of fugazi, right? you know, fugazi, fugazi, like, uh. People think that it doesn't exist, but it doesn't exist until you actually go out and do something about it. Yes, I believe we develop this vision as we become aware, you know, of ourself and we become aware of ourself through recognition of our senses, right? And attaching that to you know, our emotions and kind of our emotions being a, a reflector of, you know, our actions. So I really have been kind of doing that little process that I kind of just shared with you, you know, being aware, uh, tuning into how I feel and, you know, reflecting and if my actions were were the cause of, of this consequence, right? So I believe vision comes with that awareness, you know, that awareness of those things that are pulling us forward and investing time, you know, doing the work, you know, getting a pen and paper and literally writing down this. These are the that's things right, that's that right. I Most of the people desire. don't know, like you see, I have a like notebook <laughs> and then I, you know, I, I sketch and I, and I, and I jog. And uh, as we talk to each other, uh, you know, I kind of write some, uh, write down some keywords and, and I also write down my goals here, you know, like, uh, Hey, I am a billionaire and, and, and uh, so on, so on. But it's, uh, like a very simple action, but it's also very, because it's so simple, it's also easy not to do, you know, like the, the small things, it's all, it's very easy just to kind of say, ah, doesn't matter, you know? So yeah. I, I love when I hear, I'm sorry that I interrupted you. No, go, go ahead. I love when I hear, um, you know, people like you, founders, CEOs say, you know, I am going to be a billionaire. You know, our project's going to be breach a billion dollars. You know, that is just so inspirational. And that's why it just gives me this insight that blockchain hey, is not just even, going to I be am that going safe. To be. I am like, uh, I, I am, you know, I am. Oh, you are <laughs> like, I just literally write. I am like, uh, you know, you have to like put yes. yourself like oh, you, yes. you're there because like, go, again, going back to your vision, we have to kind of, you know, um, trick ourselves a bit, not trick anybody else. It's not that I'm tricking anyone else here because people say, Hey, you know, fake it until you make it. I don't believe that. I think you have to trick yourself. 
That's the, that's the thing. Not trick others, but trick yourself. And I think a lot of people, they want to trick others. You know, on, on Instagram, we have to do all the marketing and everything. We have to, you know, like, uh, I also, uh, very often, I don't like when people, you know, that's why I laugh from, the, like, uh, you know, I, I like to laugh uh, about the titles because uh, uh, I like to trick myself. Like, uh, you know, like, I'm not just this title uh, or... Uh, and then at the end of the day, it's about the result, right? But uh, but uh, going there, it's the whole process, and we have to trick ourselves. So, I think that's uh, the the point. Would you agree with me? Yeah. Yes, I completely agree with you. I feel that we definitely have that forever existing conversation of two voices, right? Kind of telling us what what's good, what's you know what maybe our personality wants pleasure of, you know, if it's, if it's immediate satisfaction or if we're thinking long-term, right. And that's, that's has a lot to do with vision. And you, ha- you, know, and you help with you- that, right. And you help with that. Yes. 100%, that's, extremely, yes. that's extremely important. So I hey, just, uh, closing this segment on the, on faith, because I, I am a, uh, I, I, I grew up in a, uh, Catholic, you know, country, uh, then uh, I grew up with Catholic nuns. Are you also a Catholic or a Christian? Because I know there are, you know, a lot of differences. Yes. So I I grew up Catholic. Um, yes, my grandmother, she's my soul sister uh, up in heaven. And but I have a really interesting amen. story. Yes. Amen. So I have a really interesting story. Uh, my older sister, when she was, you know, you know, already a teenager kind of had friends who would go to church and they practice at a Christian church. Um, And so I was introduced to that faith because my parents were kind of wanting to protect my sister and her not going alone to these places. So they, they tell me, go with her, go with her. So you can tell us what, what they're doing and stuff like that. But, but really for me, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because um, you know, just that exposure that I had from another religion, it just really gave me this like perspective of like, you know, there is one God, you know, and the beauty of just all religions is that we all are surrendering. I think that's the, the message, you know, you, we come to this life to experience loss and a way to cope with that is by having faith you know, by surrendering to the things of this world and actually just keeping our attachments to the things that are within, which is that love, you know, that love that we need to be open to every day so that we're allowed to be open and feel joy, you know? Oh yeah. Happiness for sure. So uh, I I totally agree with you. You know, I I was traveling a lot. um, And uh, one of the most beautiful places actually uh, that I went to, uh, was in Abu Dhabi. I went to the beautiful mosque in Abu Dhabi. I don't know if you've ever been and if, and you've seen that, but if you have not, then I think that was like the wow moment when I just realized. And what I like about uh, you know the mosques and is that they're empty. You know, like uh, uh, what I've noticed in uh, uh, and I'm gonna kind of criticize my own religion, which uh, I think it's important to kind of. You know, again, look uh, like outside the box. And I like that uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, when I've seen this beautiful mosque, it's just, it's, it's just open space. They believe that the God is actually like, it, there's no picture. You don't put a face on that. You know, it's, it's that open space, you know, like uh, just being there. And so, I mean, I can show you afterwards some of the photos from from that or you can just google but it's so beautiful such an amazing experience and also just mind opening you know so um all right let's uh let's close but i definitely agree with you that you know uh, while being uh, you know a catholic being open-minded and also understanding other viewpoints is really important i think we're kind of modern i would say christians modern catholics i would say in my country you know like the the previous generations like I think it was too conservative and just, you know, like, uh, but I love the principle. Too fundamental. The princi- yeah. The principle is still there. So, um, mm-hmm. beautiful values. That's what I, that's what I like. So 
Let's go yes. into crypto. Like, which we 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 had a segue, but uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I I couldn't leave uh, because you know crypto is crypto, but at the end of the day, it's about you. Like, who are you? You know, like I like I cannot understand you just through the crypto. Like, that's fine, you know. But uh, but that's why I wanted to kind of go around uh, and talk about faith, uh, you know, uh, university and like. Uh, like your coaching skills and everything. So, but transitioning into crypto now, we have a big question. You ready? Yes. You know, so how and why did you get involved into crypto and when was that? So actually the first time I ever heard anything related to crypto was an NFT. Um, and this was back in, I want to say early 2021. Um, and I was actually on Instagram and I just remember coming across a page and there was just beautiful art. And I just really connected to that. Um, and it was actually super rare, which was crazy because, you know, it was they were like in their beginning phase. Um, and so I was like, hmm, OK, like, what is this? Right. It's for artists. OK, they have a community. And then a friend of mine who I visited in New York uh, was all over, you know, focused on, on NFTs and just crypto and just Web3. And, and he was actually exploring like, you know, the technology and just that whole world. And I kind of got to, you know, reap a little bit of those conversations and that dialogue. And I'm like, hmm, like, you know, why, why can I enter that room and be a part of that conversation? Cause I really did experience that, you know, it was kind of like guys in a, in a, in a room all talking about NFTs and crypto and creating a project and this and that, and, you know, just brainstorming. And I'm over here thinking like, well, I have a lot to contribute as well, you know, and, and it was really interesting because actually I was already working with sales funnels and, you know, working with like email campaigns or just like marketing campaigns. And I mean, they had no idea how to go about their brand or what a campaign was or how to create a membership on their, on their network or whatever that looked like. Um, So I really saw potential for myself and I kind of saw like, I have a head start. You know, they're kind of they're dropping out of, you know, Columbia and NYC and, you know, like they definitely know what they're doing at, to this point. So what I need to do is do my own research and figure this out. So um, a couple of months later, that same individual, you know, went to a conference uh, in Portugal that I, I shared with you. And it was for, you know, the Solana um blockchain, right? So it was the, I think, I believe it was the breakout um, conference that they have. Um, So that was also very interesting. And I love that the Solana network, you know, gave a lot of free education. And so I got to absorb all of that. I spent like a four day, like weekend, you know, just learning about these terminologies and what DAO meant and just like the ledger and protocols and all of these things. So um, I kind of just started to dip my feet into it a little bit more and just exploring, you know, how I can put my work and, you know, publish my, you know, my work into the metaverse, because I feel like just a lot of dreamers out there, especially the techs, like that's why, yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. you know, I love the techs because they really are dreamers. They really understand the but power sometimes too of this much, technology. Too much, too much dreaming uh, and not enough execution. You know? <laughs> like uh, they take well, too much time, you know? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's why it's important to have, you know, someone stimulating that direction. Like, okay, yes, this dream, but how do we, you know, create a structure or a, a, a you know, an experience for that user that's going to be coming into this community and that, you know, there's longevity in that relationship, that you it's see, not just I, I, transactional. I, I, I need to learn those magic words from you because you just used the word and it's a beautiful word how you say it stimulating that's just amazing like i would say hey just f- freaking i'm gonna keep you accountable you know i'm gonna beat you to death until it's done so <laughs> i need to learn those uh those beautiful words from you and uh and become a better communicator so 
so that's awesome. You didn't actually come into crypto because of Bitcoin. It was because of art, something visual. Wow. Definitely, yes. I mean, you see, and we you see are like just how it hooked becoming you. So more. the visual stuff hooked you. So Because I'm thinking about like how other people, I don't know, women, you know, not only women, but we have a lot of male, males, you know, a lot, a lot of guys. So we need uh, more women. And I think you're amazing at that. You know, and not only you're inspirational that you can actually uh, through your story and, uh, you know, you're being the, tr you know, what do you call it? Trail trailblazer. Or maybe you have a like you have those beautiful words. So I, I'm always using those rough words. So who, who how would you know leader? Like, uh, how would you like describe yourself for, you know, other women who would like to get involved? Um. You know, I, I guess just like, like a thought leader, you know, in this space. A thought um, leader. Look at that. Yes, yeah, a thought leader in this Web3 space, for sure. Um, I mean, I this consensus conference that we went to was just, you know, amazing. I love one, you know, that I was able to meet someone like you, network, um, is just, you know, just so many opportunities to be in that space. And... Um, just the conversation, just so much to learn from and, you know, to hear from different artists and texts and just people in this space really building it because they're, they're the ones building. We are actually all of us. That's the purpose of the metaverse that we all are able to contribute to the, you know, infrastructure of, of this worlds of this new digital world that we're all going to be able to, you know, um, yeah, be, cre be creative and, and yeah, just make, make our, ourselves grow in that way. Yeah. And, <laughs> all, and uh, no, no, you, you, you know, you're, 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 you're awesome. Like at uh, framing that for women. I think they, they will definitely relate to that. I mean, they, they wouldn't relate to me, you know, the, the rough diamond. So, I was reading an article, I think it was Tim Draper, and he said something about like, uh, he mentioned that women actually could lead the way, believe or not, the next sort of wave and lead the way now, take over when it comes to crypto adoption. Because women are, you know, like the, I think they're, the, I, I don't know what's the percentage I would need to go back. But he said that majority, you know, of like all the consumers and, and, and women are spenders, right? So you stimulate the economy because, you know, like, you know, us men, we're going to just hold our money there. And, and women actually, they're going to go out and pull the trigger and uh, put it into circulation, you know. So and money has to be in circulation. So, so I think that's, you know, what do you think about that? I mean, to be honest, just like, you know, every uh, organization who is, you know, the majority male, you know, it can be pretty cold for women who are under that environment. So, I mean, we're living in 2022. Like, why are we going to go backwards? Let's actually continue moving forward and progress together by bringing women into this space and, you know, contributing together. Because I feel that, you know, that's the, that's the reason why, you know, organizations and just, just communities are so broken because the institutions that built, um, that built it, you know, were primarily men. Um, and that's why we are, you know, experiencing resistance worldwide because, you know, because of this technology, we have access to information. We have access to, you know, a computer. We have access to software that now we can control our identity. We can control our path, you know, and what we decide to invest in. And that is so powerful. And that's why I believe so much in blockchain because, you know, it gives you that ability to protect your work, your identity as a brand. Um, and it's just, like I said, you know, the opportunities are endless in all spaces. And I know right now we're just exploring, you know, digital art and digital fashion, you know, but I do believe in 
these metaverses that different, you know, spaces are going to provide, you know, um, I am actually an ambassador now with Grateful Giraffes. And so, you know, the community that they're building is, you know, really beautiful. And it's long term thinking in a way that the people who are building it now are going to be able to con contribute to the growth. And, um, and yeah, so I, I think there's just so much out there that we can explore, but we just need to, you know, make that choice that going into this, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be rough. Why? Because it's a new space. But if you believe that you are someone who can take these downfalls and pioneer in whatever market you're in, you know, you're going to end up winning. You're going to end up leading in a couple of years and you're going to be so knowledgeable in the space. So if you start learning now and investing, you know, in the right communities, you're going to just, you know, be out of this park, you know. <laughs> I totally agree with you. And the word community, I think that for women, because women are all about community. They're the community stimulators, if you will, you know, like we need the, uh, we need all the women uh, to come in, spend all the money, you know, use crypto, <laughs> use uh, the NFTs and build communities, help uh, stimulate all those communities. And, uh, and Alondra, will definitely help you and uh, we'll be happy to connect with you and maybe meet you at the next conference. So any final words from you? Well, I would like to just share, um, you know, that I am available to any woman or just, you know, any male who wants to learn about this space and just have a conversation. Just, you know, there are no wrong questions. Um, and I feel that that's the reason why a lot of people don't even dare to have the conversation because they're afraid of being wrong. Um, and I want to invite you to just take that first step, you know, watch that first video and have that conversation with someone who is like-minded with someone who is also going to support that vision. Because the problem that I'm also seeing is that people who are believing in this space go and have a conversation with someone who has no knowledge and, you know, it deflects their, their reason, you know? So just just be mindful of those things. Um, and yeah, if you also are interested um, in coaching, you know, um, feel free to visit alondragarza.com. And I'd love to have a free strategy session with you so you can, you know, explore the process that I'll take you through and help you reach that next level in your life. Um, so yes, and I want to finish off by saying thank you, Marcin, for, you know, allowing me to have this conversation with you and I appreciate, you know, your friendship and just your kindness. So thank you so much. Hey, thanks for your time. And, uh, I also want to invite everyone to connect with you on Instagram. You have awesome Instagram profile. I see you keep it up to date. I kind of left Instagram and I moved over to LinkedIn, but you're also on LinkedIn. So I've just connected with you and we'll, uh, we'll put all the links uh, in the description. It's uh, Alondra Garza, right? Alondra Garza. That's correct. How do you say that? It's so difficult for me because I, I do the, the Spanish words. Alondra. <laughs> I love your accent though. Um, it's Thank Alondra Garza. Alondra Garza. Alondra Garza. Garza. Yeah. Garza. So folks, Perfect. Alondra Garza. I am Alondra Garza on Instagram and the same Alondra Garza on LinkedIn. You also have a text that people can text you to join the community. That's correct. Yes, I am building my community and I will soon have a community on Discord. Um, so if you Beautiful. would like to, you know, receive uh, just motivational, you know, messages throughout the week to kind of just boost that momentum for you, kind of just remind you of, you know, what life to. is all about. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to to connect with you through there. And not be a gruha, you know. So, yes. <laughs> so, 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 uh, 
Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Appreciate you sharing your story. You're awesome. And I encourage you to go out and, uh, you know, get all the women and not only women, but build those communities and just do what we've just discussed here. One thing is dreaming. One thing is vision. Another thing, very important, and both, both are very important, is actually going out there and executing. 100%. I agree. And, you know, I feel like ugh, it's always a nudge when I hear those things. But what would we be if we didn't feel that, you know, that little resistance when, you know, people tell us just go out there and do the work? Because at the end of the day, it's hard, but we just have to just hold that belief and that conviction. That's right. And on that happy note, thank you again. And uh, I'll talk to all of you another podcast next week. Thank you very much. And until the next time. Bye. Życie bez gruchy. Jedyny życiowy podcast w Polsce stworzony dla geeków.